Okay, you guys, so if you haven't heard, I am actually in Kuwait working IT for the military, and I just feel I'm just used to this type of work. I'm used to the type of environment, and I I do actually get some sense of like duty and responsibility with serving my country by being a contractor and doing IT for the military. So this next, you know, commentary that I'm going to do, it's, it's really going to get on my nerves because I did serve 10 years and I've been through three wars. I lived on a post where it actually got blown up and people died. And when I hear individuals like this person who is a lawyer turns only fans, it really irks me. And I know what I'm asking for when I say that I don't believe that women should vote. I know exactly what's, what, what I mean when I say that. I'm not trying to be uh, I guess uh, controversial when I say this, but having seen war, I understand why men are somewhat um, baffled when it comes to women wanting equality and wanting to vote, but yet not being drafted or at least having to sign up for the draft or else risk, you know, going to jail, not being eligible for certain things. Um, so, um, Let's go ahead and watch this and then we'll we'll talk about it as we go. David McCoyne, thank you. Go ahead, Madison. If women want equality, why don't women fight to be included in the draft? Seems like they want rights without responsibility. Oh God, the way responsibility is spelled. Sorry, I don't want to be also, I'm, I think a lot of people are just against it. The draft hasn't been triggered in over 50 years, and I think if it was, people would have an issue with it, including a lot of feminists. Yeah, well, feminists, their official position, if you have one official position as a feminist group, uh, is to abolish the draft entirely. Yeah, so for men I agree women. with that. Yeah, but is that... That's kind of wishful thinking. It, it, it occurs to me that a country needs to have... A draft in the event of some sort of catastrophic war. I don't think a draft is good, but it's plausible that a country would need to call upon its citizens to defend said country. I don't think anyone should be forced by their government to go die for the country. That's then who opinion. would be, I mean... If we don't have enough people that volunteer to do it, sure. then that's, but I don't believe the answer is forcing people. That's me though, so... She calls her... S <laughs> so this woman is a lawyer. She has no idea what um, strategy is. She has no idea what contingency plan is. She would make a terrible lawyer to not have these things on the front of her mind instead of hindsight. And for someone to say that, this is the reason why I don't, like, I'm, I'm like, when it comes to immigration here, I'm very picky about who we choose from what countries. Because this woman here, her parents are from Iran. And if you watch this episode of OnlyFans, she talks about, you know, because she's a feminist, she talks about women in Iran not having certain privileges. Women in Iran getting beat or stoned because they have to wear, you know, a head, you know, uh, their hijab. And if they take it off, oh, oh my God, that's such a disgrace. But then she says shit like this. And it gets worse, you guys. But it's this is one of the main reasons why I believe women should never have uh, should be in positions that were, have really logical taxing they're really logical taxing occupations because they don't care about logic or strategy they care about their feelings and it's it makes them very dangerous not only to security but to society as a whole okay so then you've i mean you've basically surrendered your country to I think it's, I'd rather force. surrender my country than Matthew force people McCarthy against their will. <laughs> like that right there, you know, for her to even say, that, for me, that right there was what triggered me. For her to even say, for her to even say that bullshit. Do you know how many men die for you to even say that? If this country wasn't as free, your parents wouldn't have come over here to give you a better life. They would have stayed in fucking Iran or gone to another fucking extremist Muslim country where they can, you know, hope for a better life for you. 
But when you said that, you spit on every person that died for our country. Who's to say that the enemy won't be the, the enemy of the country that you, well, the, the, I should say the, the government of the country that your parents fled? Do you even think about these things? Are you that fucking ditz? No wonder you turned into an OnlyFans hoe. Like, this woman is so fucking dangerous, it blows my mind. And we have so many of women around that are just like her, that don't even understand the people who came, who came before her and died for all of them to be like this. You think if I ran, took over America, or, you know, had a, uh, they were part of a, a coalition that attacked America and they actually won, you think that you'll be able to fucking continue having your OnlyFans? To, getting, to continue getting supported by the very group, the very sex that you have so much disdain for? Men? You think they will allow for you to continue having you living your lavish life like that? This is the reason why you're an OnlyFans chick. There's no way you can be a lawyer and actually win a fucking argument with that type of illogical fallacy. But we're going to go back to another part of this where she's talking about the draft, if I'm not mistaken. That was... Okay, so my mistake, I thought I was in the middle of the discussion, but that was actually at the beginning of the discussion. So now let's go ahead and continue with did her, her display of just stupidity and why she gives a prime example of why women shouldn't be allowed to be in very logical taxing occupations that require forethought instead of hindsight, okay? $9. Brian Chat named me Giga Simp Simpaloo and requested me on next with my boop ha. Let's make it happen. I promise you'll break your donation record. Do my research for both sides and when I'm wrong, I take accountability. To everyone, does body count matter? We'll, we'll touch on body count in, in just a bit. Uh, thank you, man. Appreciate it, Matt. Um, okay, so we were talking about the, dra <coughs> the draft. Draft. Well, I, I actually think that's a really solid argument for why feminism is not actually about true equality. Why? She just said the feminist position is to abolish the draft for both genders. Well, I mean... And it hasn't been triggered in 50 years. Anyone who's, like, talking about the draft is, like, they're, like, that's the topic. Okay, so feminism is all about wanting equality. You're so dumb that you can't even understand. When you mean equality, it means in all domains of social aspects when it comes to our society. All of them, not the ones that you pick and choose. And the one thing that is very, it's a necessary piece of, I guess you can call it auxiliary power that every country needs. In order to be a superpower, guess what, dumbass? You need to have military, manufacturing, um, and I believe basically <laughs> global dominance. How do you think you can achieve that without a military? <sighs> so, it is a very weak argument. If you don't want equality, which is what is the very basis of feminism, no one is going to sit here and say that we can't have a draft for our country. No country is going to do that. No country is going to have some ridiculous rule like that because men don't live in this fantasy world where the possibility or the thought of war never happening is, is, is just something that they never think about. They always pre are prepared just in case something like that does happen. They have these things called contingency plans. Therefore, you have certain departments, one being a military, in case someone invades your homeland. They don't have the luxury to think in your lala, a kumbaya world, to think like something like this will never ever happen. 
men have been fighting each other at wars for since the beginning of human time. And women didn't have to worry about such things because the men were forced to do them. So when it comes to this whole basis of feminism and wanting equality, I'm sorry, one of those social aspects that you have to think about in your fight for equality is being on the same playing field in, in a way of you know, what women can actually do when it comes to the military. And I'm sorry, that includes being drafted. But we'll get further into that. I don't want to take up too much of this, but we'll, we'll continue. The thing that they're focused on is focused on something bizarre. It hasn't been triggered in 50 years, but all men over the age of 18, upon turning 18, have to register for the draft. Yeah, and I'm against that, but it hasn't been. No, you, like nobody in our generation. No, but you're not going to you're not gonna get rid of the draft. Therefore, we ought to equalize it. I think that if it was to get triggered, I would be on the front line of saying that nobody should be allowed on it. Nobody should be allowed in it. Okay, that's great. War is terrible. Okay, well, aren't but you the one that war said that, happens? Okay, so aren't you the one that just said that if there's like physical standards for getting in to do firefighting, if there are physical standards to get into the war, a lot of women wouldn't meet those requirements. Right, but you could be drafted into the war effort and have a supportive role. He's very right. I myself have been IT in the military. That was my primary job. You have chefs, you have, well, basically cooks, you have HR, you have uh, fuel fuelers. There's so many jobs that don't require you leaving a fob and actually being on the front line out there. I mean, for crying out loud, you have women as nurses during times of war. They weren't on the front line, but they were in the rear of uh, for the battlefield, and they were also stationed at hospitals that were back in you know secure homeland. So it's like, like she knows nothing about these things because she doesn't a she doesn't she doesn't. You, you tell me she doesn't even care about it. She doesn't. This is the one thing that women never have to worry about because you don't have to sign up for the fucking draft. And when, I, like my, with me myself going over, I've been overseas and I've I've been to war on three separate occasions. My first time being in war, like my fob that I was on blew up. People died, and. I, I remember the look on the on these men faces when they come back and they you know rush their their part they they rush their um battle buddy into the medic and they come out running or screaming because their 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 battle buddy died on the fucking table. You don't have to worry about these things. And most of the time, women uh, until lately they they haven't been able to sign up for these. Um, they call them. Um, I can't remember the name of them, but they, they're, they're, they're the jobs that require men to be on the front lines. The more aggressive type of uh, jobs, um, the more sh uh, physical straining type of jobs, um, more and more mentally draining type of jobs, those weren't available to women. There's a reason for that. But she can't even grasp that you have the luxury as a woman to not even think about such things when you turn 18 and still be able to vote all while you're screaming over here we need to have equality equality also means signing up for the draft and i actually care about this country i actually care about keeping my freedom i will never bow down to a fucking enemy like your ass will that's the difference. And you know, I actually like equality. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, Leah, you're so much more masculine than this. Is. Yeah, you're right. Because I'm a realist. And I know that there are things in society, things in our life that shouldn't happen. Okay? I wish things like war never happened. But the reality is that since the beginning of human history, as long as there are resources to take, as long as there's someone out there whose ego is so massive that they need to be in charge of everything, they will do it. And this is not only just men talking, this is also women leaders too, who have started wars. Or did people forget about Mary, Mary of Scotland? You don't, but, but women are okay. entirely, oh, hold on, yeah. but women are entirely exempt from even being drafted into a support role that doesn't even face the risk of seeing combat. Okay, so in that sense, if we're gonna have a draft, sure, we can both be in it. But I'm saying neither of us should be in it. So. Well, that okay, but there shouldn't be war. 
Like it's just such. It's Even not if there a, is war, I don't believe in a draft. That's what I'm saying. Now, if we're gonna have one anyway, I don't think it's fair that just men are drafted. I'll give you. That. And they're shaking. Both of them are she shaking her heads because she's a fucking idiot. You got. You will be the. These two women will be the first ones to. Or look for a man to come save them once the enemy comes and, you know, pillage their villages, rape their women, take them as hostages. What do you think happened to the, uh, the spoil? To the victors goes the spoil. Do they, do they remember this shit from history? Like, women don't have to worry about this because they don't think that wars will ever happen. This is how dumb they are. Why? This is why it's like... And I know this sounds really fucked up, but when I think about societal norms back in the day and how men looked at women as children, they thought of them as children, thought of them as simple-minded, they thought of them as not being able to handle certain pressures because they're so emotional, so hysterical, I and then I see them nodding their heads to this buffoonery. Not knowing that, hey, if war ever broke out and we lost, your ass might be, get kidnapped and raped and put it brought into sex slave for, by the enemy? Because, like, that's never happened. <laughs> you, it makes so much sense why we were oppressed by men. Because you're, with women at the top, at the head like this, they think they're really smart, but they're actually pretty stupid. Be that. Right, but women aren't in the streets like demanding that they be. Because this is a non-issue right now. <laughs> it's not. It's not a non-issue. Yes, none of our lives right now are impacted by the draft. Not a single person. No, that's that's wrong because men are required to register you upon turning eighteen. Yes. There's certain. Hold on. There's certain. Uh, you, it's harder to potentially qualify for certain. Uh, I believe student loans. You're barred from certain federal jobs if you aren't registered. Technically, on the books, it's a felony. There's a five hundred thousand dollar fine. Yeah. Now, whether a prosecutor would I don't actually prosecute it, no. But perhaps in wartime, they might prosecute yeah, it. Yeah, in wartime. So when this is it's the plausible. reason, the reason people are on the street is because there's no. It's not wartime, and so most men that are registering for the draft, that's the end of of what. They I mean, do. we're arguably in the, the least stable place in the past forty years, and there isn't any like talk of the draft being because she's so busy taking off her clothes and stripping and doing boy girl content on OnlyFans. She's Oh, she's just ignorant to what's going on in the world right now. And Brian is most definitely right. This is the most unstable it has been, especially with our fucking senile geriatric president in charge. But she's such a bozo that she doesn't pay attention to these things to not understand how the unrest throughout society worldwide has been on the rise. And tensions between nations to start conflict has also been on the rise i would not rather wait for those conflicts to happen before thinking about a draft i'd rather have one in place and the fact that she's a lawyer who can't even put this shit together should piss off every fucking body every fucking veteran for you to s no i'll be the first one to tell her parents you failed you came to this country and you didn't teach your daughter the values of valuing freedom the values of fighting to make sure that your freedoms are never taken away. Instead, you let her grow up in this umbrella shroud of protectiveness that this bitch will literally surrender our country, if it ever came to it, to an enemy who was just as fuck who's who's just as fucking brutal as the country that you fled, who didn't care about women's rights. This is the daughter that you fucking raised. But, you know, I'm done with this conversation. But she, she and this girl over here with the big titties hanging out, beautiful looking, but you're the reason why. And I know, like, like I said, I know what I'm saying. I know it's very controversial, but I understand, especially especially just being in a, a male-dominated field to begin with in the first place, I understand 
why men look at us the way that they do when it comes to responsibility and relying on us to actually carry it through or carry whatever task it is through for, to, uh, through fruition and us deal with the ramifications of whether or not it fail or succeed because you think like a child. You don't know how other men think and this right here proves it. Women don't think like like women don't think about apparently wars, but yet they have been going on throughout centuries of the human of the human race. That right there tells me you don't care what men go through. You don't care how many of them have died. And it, it makes me so mad. It, like y'all don't even understand this shit pisses me off so bad hearing this woman speak. But I hope if there were ever, I, and the thing is, I know wanting to put on a draft, like to have women put on a draft a lot of people wouldn't want to go for that and I understand and I don't think there's anything wrong with having a supplemental requirement um, maybe working be having some sort of public service to basically in my opinion earn the right to vote I don't see if you don't want to if you don't want to go into the military I will definitely say to equal out the playing fields go into some sort of public service if that means doing community service for, you know, as voluntary for two and a half years, okay, then do that. Um, if it if it means, I don't know, being, a, I don't know, working in forestry, working in some public servant position, um, I think that should be required for women if they don't want to join the military. And because, like I said, I think trying to draft trying to make a policy where young women have to get drafted into the military, I think it's not going to be a winnable policy for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. But having that being substituted with public service, I think a lot more people would be on board with that. But that's just my feelings about this and in a way to kind of equal out the responsibility for not signing up for some sort of public service um, as women. Um, like men have to suffer some of the cons well suffer the consequences if they don't sign up for a selective service. I think it's a way to even out the playing field, and I'm totally on board for equality when it comes to that. I've always been that way. It's one of the reasons why I never bitch about the work that I get. There's you know, especially being in IT, there's times I had to work hours, twelve hours. I mean, most of the times, I mean, even when I'm not here working twelve hours. When I was back home, I would work my regular nine hour shift and then go work on more IT stuff that was related to my job. It was the only way I could move up. It was the only way to basically compete with other men that have just better, you know, um, uh, mental capacity to think more logically and faster than women do. There's a reason why there's more men in IT and programming than women. And it has a lot to do with the way that they think and can compartmentalize things. But, uh, so I'm all about equality. I just think that you say they are. They're not really about equality unless it suits them. And most of the time, it's the only, only way that it suits them is if it's in a nice, comfy area that's air conditioned and doesn't really require a lot of effort. But they want that, but also the equal pay. And it only benefits them. They only want equality when it benefits them, not when it's actually true equality. But that's just my opinion about it. Sorry that this one was a little bit long, but y'all, this bitch irked my nerves. Irked my nerves so fucking bad. Oh, I would have rang her. <laughs> but anyways, if you're a veteran out there, you know, um, um, and you've lost someone, I do thank you for your service. And if it wasn't for all the veterans that came before me. And yeah, I know America has a really shitty ass history, but I'm actually very proud to serve, to actually be able to serve this country, especially when there was a time I would not have been able to be, to be given such that honor. So fuck this bitch and <laughs> y'all have a good night. <laughs>